Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. Leading the British royal family saved Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's marriage. When royal fans across the globe watched Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex tied a knot in May 2018, no one would have ever dreamed things would pan out as they have. After two years in the royal spotlight and following the birth of their son, Archie Harrison, the pair made the shocking decision to lead the royal family. Though it was clear that the British press and public never truly embraced the Duchess of Sussex, no one saw makes it coming. It may have been an unprecedented move, but Meghan and Prince Harry are already shaping their new life in the Duchess hometown of Los Angeles. In fact, Looking at all that Meghan endured during her time as a senior working royal, it appears that makes it save the Sussexes' marriage. Meghan Markle sacrificed a lot to be with Prince Harry. From the moment Meghan was linked to Prince Harry, the press and public began digging into her life, trying to turn up anything that was unsavory. She was the subject of racist and sexist remarks with the people calling her ugly names like Gold Digger, and be gay. However, the suit's alum sacrificed a lot more than her privacy to be with the prince. Relationship expert Sammy Wonder told Express, It is easy to see that Meghan is not looking for Harry or this marriage to complete her. She may have given up her Hollywood career due to royal protocol, but the woman continues to keep herself busy and involved with several charitable interests and even flew all the way to New York to enjoy her baby shower with her own set of personal friends. She is not going to be the woman that looks up to Prince Harry to fulfill each and every one of her needs, as many first-time married women would do. Still, royal life was much more challenging on Meghan than she expected. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were unhappy in the British royal family. Things were more than a bit challenging for the Duchess of Sussex in the royal family. In fact, things reportedly got so bad that she was convinced there was a conspiracy against her. Royal expert Angela Mollard told New Ideas Postcast. Meghan was convinced there was a conspiracy against her, and so she basically put herself in isolation when they moved to Frogmore. She also felt like an outsider from the start. This wasn't the life she was used to, as she wanted out. Prince Harry, who had grown up in the royal family, had also been struggling for some time. The source told The Sun. The truth is Harry had been unhappy for a long, long time. He wanted to move in the direction that they did, and had been considering it for more than a year. Meghan supported Harry's decision. But there was more than one occasion where she asked him if he was certain it was what he wanted. And she always made it clear she would support him in whatever he did. Megxit saved Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's marriage. Despite everything that has transpired between them, the royal family, and the British press and public, Megxit saved Meghan and Prince Harry's marriage. Royal expert Diane Meheny told Entertainment Tonight. Two years in, they're still very much in love. So much has happened for Meghan and Harry, but I'm told by a source very close to them that all the experiences, the challenges, the obstacles of 2019 and 2020 have really made them even closer. They've always been a great team and a partnership, and you've seen that when you're with them. But they were described as hand in glove, and that idea that really one just fits the other beautifully, and they complement each other. They work well together, and I think looking back on what's clearly been a challenging and a testing year, the one thing that just hasn't faltered is their commitment to each other and their love for one another. They've done this together as a couple, and I think it's important to remember that. Strict royal fashion rules Meghan Markle never bothered to follow. Meghan, Duchess of Sussex's days of performing royal duties are behind her. The former actress and her husband stepped down from their roles as senior royals and are now forging new career paths and living in Los Angeles. But one of the things Meghan will be remembered for 
during her time as a senior royal is that she broke rules, lots of rules. We're looking back at some of the instances when Meghan tore up the royal rule book and did what she wanted. Meghan went against protocol early on. Meghan made headlines the day she and Prince Harry announced their engagement in November 2017. Photographers and royal watchers alike noted that the former suit star wasn't wearing pantyhose when she stepped out for their photo call. Commentator Victoria Arbiter said, You never see a royal without their nude stockings, Meghan. From what I can see from the engagement photographs, it doesn't look like she was wearing tights or stockings. And wearing them is one of the Queen's hard, steadfast rules. Other times the Duchess ignored royal rules. Other times Meghan decided not to follow royal precedent is when she opted to wear head to toe black. The Duchess of Sussex is a fan of black and wore it on several occasions however, royals are only expected to wear it for funerals, somber state services, and during periods of mourning. Another rule Meghan broke often was every time she wore pantsuits. She donned trousers for a number of royal engagements, even though tradition dictates that royal women wear skirts or dresses while on duty. That is precisely why the Queen doesn't wear pants when she makes public appearances. There are also some specifics for royals when it comes to their nail polish. Women in the British royal family must keep their nails cut and groomed at all times and only paint them in a nude or neutral color. But when Prince Harry's wife was a presenter at the Fashion Awards in 2018, she showed off a Bordeaux color on her nails. Meghan still ended up on best, dressed lists. Even though she didn't always keep with the royal fashion rules, Meghan received plenty of love for her style choices. In fact, she landed on several best, dressed lists including Vogue's 2019 list, in which she was credited with epitomizing modern thinking royalty. Rogue loved the Duchess style when she was pregnant with baby Archie, saying she revitalized maternity dressing. The publication praised her again for her post-pregnancy looks, specifically the Wales Bonner dress she wore during her postpartum moment, when she and Prince Harry introduced their son to the world. Another report. Two of Prince Harry's passion projects team up as he leaves royal life. One of the Duke of Sussex's passion projects has found a new home under his Invictus Games Foundation. The Endeavour Fund, which supports the ambitions of wounded, injured and sick service personnel and veterans, has been transferred across from the Royal Foundation and into the work of the Invictus Games Foundation. The organization announced the news in a statement via Twitter. The Endeavour Fund was established by Prince Harry when he was patron of the Royal Foundation, the primary philanthropic and charitable vehicle for the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, and previously the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Harry and Meghan stepped back from their royal duties in March 2020, but they carried out a number of engagements in the UK before moving to Los Angeles in the United States. One of the couple's final outings was to the Endeavour Fund Awards at Mansion House in London. The Sussexes met the nominees at a pre-ceremony reception, as well as Endeavour participants and supporters of the fund. Both Harry and Meghan each presented an award during a ceremony, which was hosted by former Invictus Games medalist J.J. Chalmers. The Duke also delivered a speech in which he spoke about the Endeavour Fund, having a closer working relationship with the Invictus Games Foundation in the near future, saying, Invictus proves that when we bring people together from around the world, men and women who have fought together side by side, to have the opportunity to enhance their recovery through a shared experience of sport and challenge is something that breaks through cultural difference, through skin color and through bias, and is truly amazing. It is my hope that in the future, this Invictus spirit will not only be spread at the games themselves, but regularly, consistently, and continuously through new worldwide endeavor opportunities. This year's Invictus Games Tournament 
was due to take place in The Hague, the Netherlands, in May but it has been rescheduled amid the coronavirus crisis. So there you have it, that's all the news on Meghan and Prince Harry situation today. As always, thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and press that notification bell. If you want to be notified of future videos. Thank you. Don't stop.